This week on Wheel of Science, we're talking Isaac Newton. The gravity of this subject cannot be measured. <laughs> Good one, Chuck. Welcome to Wheel of Science. What's up, everybody, and welcome to Wheel of Science. I'm your host, Chuck Nice, and this is the show where we answer your questions about the universe. But I don't answer your questions about the universe. The one, the only, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson answers your questions about the universe. What's up, little Newton? <laughs> you know me and Newton go way back, so just get on it and spin that wheel. Patrick O'Leary wants to know this. What would Isaac Newton's first Google search be? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. How about, uh, what is Google? <laughs> Dude doesn't know anything yet. Or, what is computer? <laughs> what? <laughs> I have no idea, Chuck. I can't believe it. That is the first time that a no idea has come up in all the years I have been working with you. But if you had to choose one thing, what would it be, Neil? All right, if you had to ask one question, maybe it would be, which kind of apple hurts the least when it falls from a tree and hits you in the head? Chuck? Oh, ah! Well, it's not that one. And I thought that story was fake. Well, he did sit under a tree and watch an apple fall, but no, he was not hit in the head by the apple. That was at another tree. Oh, Neil, you ready for <laughs> another question? Chuck, spin the wheel. Rex Young wants to know this. If Newton never existed and his work never replicated by anyone else ever, how different would our world be? Ooh, uh, we would not have the Industrial Revolution. We would still be with horse and buggy. He laid the foundation of all major science that would follow in the 150 years after. So, but the good thing about science is that as brilliant as he was, all of that would have still been discovered given some time that followed it. Maybe not by the same person, because his titanic genius did it all. Spread it, share the love, 50 people perhaps, 50 different physicists, would have eventually come up with all of his laws and all of his ideas. So uh, we're, we're in good hands with the methods and tools of science and those who invoke them to decode the universe. Well, Neil, in my little fangirl world, you would have either come up with it yourself or been one of those 50 scientists. Don't say anything. You ready for another question? All right, let's do this. Marco Steven Juarez wants to know, if Newton came to visit us, what major problem on the edge of modern physics will you present him with first? <laughs> I wouldn't present him physics problems first. I present him our societal problems first. I'd say, can you fix this? Any way to fix climate change, fix our energy problem, because he's a really brilliant guy. And if you lay out the elements of a problem, he might come to a solution that none of us would have even dreamt of. But first do that. Then I would bring the physics problems to him. Can you help us with dark matter, dark energy? What was around before the universe began? Uh, how did we go from, from organic molecules to self-replicating life in the early Earth? I would hand him the biggest questions we have and sit back and wait for an answer because none of us could do it. Well, which one do you think he could solve first? I think the dark matter problem. The fact that 85% of the gravity of the universe has no known origin and he's a gravity guy, I think he would like choose that problem first when given the option. Ah, the gravity expert solving the gravity problem. I see what you did there, Neil. All right, time to take a break, but we'll be back with more questions on Wheel of Science. It doesn't take Isaac Newton to build a kick butt website. I'm not even joking. I did it for Wheel of Science on Wix, and look how great it looks. We embedded every episode on wheelofscience.com, added the descriptions, customized the template to look professional, and now it's on the web for all of you to see. Oh, that's nice. I like it. Time to create your own site. Head to the link in the description and check out Wix. That's wix.com slash go slash startalk. Welcome back to Wheel of Science. Time for another question. Let's get this party started. 
Jack Garrison says this, why did Newton need to invent calculus? What problem was he trying to solve that he could not solve without calculus? Newton, basically on a dare, invented integral and differential calculus. So those of you who have taken calculus in high school or in college, slogging through it, Newton invented it on a lark. There was a friend of his who asked him, why is it that planets orbit in these shapes called ellipses? Why that shape and not some other shape? Because the, these, these shapes come out of his, his theories of gravity. He said, I don't know, I, I'll get back to you. Goes away, comes back, here is why. These are actually sections of a cone. If you take a perfect cone and cut it horizontally and look at, that's a perfect circle. Cut it at an angle, that's an ellipse. Cut it at an angle parallel to the side of the cone, you get what we call a parabola. Cut it at a higher angle, you get a hyperbola. And so all gravitational orbits have one of these three shapes. And of course the last two don't orbit at all, they're open-ended orbits. Once they come in, they never come back. They come in, exit, they're gone forever. So, to understand why gravity describes conical sections, these shapes required calculus. And so he invented that to answer the question his friend posed. What have you invented lately? Oh, I invented a time travel machine. It doesn't work, but I invented it. Plus, since you've been talking about cones, all I've been doing is standing here taking the ice cream. <laughs> you ready for another question, Neil? Spin the wheel. Elaine Cass wants to know this. Some parts of Newton's work have been superseded by Einstein's. How is Newton's work still useful in the sciences and engineering? Great question. So you can say superseded, but it's not entirely accurate. The better way to think about it is Isaac Newton's laws of gravity and motion apply to every kind of motion he had seen. You know, a fast running horse, uh, the moon orbit around Earth, Earth orbit around the sun, and only when you get to really high speeds, really strong gravities, do you find that Newton's laws break down. He no longer described nature accurately and you needed Einstein's equations of motion. Einstein's special theory of relativity, that's his, his theory of motion, and Einstein's general theory of relativity, that's the, theory of, the modern theory of gravity. And what you find is that here's this pocket of the universe described by Isaac Newton, and Einstein's theories describe a bigger sampling of the universe, and within which you find Newton's laws. So no, it didn't supplant Newton. It enclosed Newton in a bigger, deeper understanding of the universe. We went to the moon using just Newton's laws. They were sufficient. But you want to probe the atom? You want to probe the early universe, the Big Bang itself? You need Einstein. Well, there you have it. Einstein and Newton, two great minds that taste great together. That's like a zombie's dream. All right, time for this week's caption contest. But this week, Neil, something different happened, and I'm not sure how. Normally there's a picture of you, but they turned the tables on me, and now they used a picture of me. It's about time. I'm tired of looking at pictures of myself. And the winning caption is Austin Fogelquist, who says, I think I'm being paid to be funny. I am being paid, right, Neil? Neil? Come on, man, help a brother out. Yes, Chuck, you are paid with our love. You know, I was hoping for something a little less deep than love and a little more usable. What the f Time now for this week's poll. Make sure you answer the poll right here. And the question is, who would you rather meet? Newton, Einstein, or Galileo? Ooh, that's gotta be a tough one for you, Neil. I have an Isaac Newton finger puppet. So the answer's clear. And, and, wait there. Neil, where are you going? Where are you going? Okay, um, I'm not sure what's happening here. Like I said, me and Ike go way back. All right, Neil, um, I'm pretty sure that was the creepiest fan tribute I've ever seen. Ugh. 
you have it. That's our show. And of course, we have to thank the one, the only, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thanks, Neil. And I am delighted to be your personal astrophysicist. And of course, in whatever else you may be doing on December 25th, don't forget to bid happy birthday to <coughs> Isaac Newton. Hey, I suck at calculus. But that's okay. It's not a requirement to make a beautiful website on Wix. It takes just minutes to get your website up and running using their artificial design intelligence, known as ADI. I don't know how it works. I just know it makes everything happen and happen beautifully. If you want something a little more custom, you can head into their drag and drop editor to get exactly the site you had in mind. What are you waiting for? Start your site right now with Wix. Find the link in the description. Go to wix.com slash go slash startalk.